The purpose of this clip is to give an overview of the different possible outcomes we can get if we perform a multivariate constraint optimization. So we'll stay quite generic for starters. We have a function f uh, of x1 and x2 which we want to maximize and that's subject to a constraint equally a function of x1 and x2 being large or equal to zero. When we follow the uh, Lagrangian uh, multiplier uh, methodology, we will write down the Lagrangian function. Uh, that function L is again a function of x1 and x2, but now also of the Lagrange multiplier lambda. And that function is f plus lambda times g. So firstly, you may wonder and sometimes as we'll find out it's uh, useful to ask the question whether actually a solution to this problem exists and there's a particular case where we can answer that question definitely we will have to establish whether the function f is continuous and whether the constraint is compact so if both of these conditions are given then indeed we know that a solution to this problem exists now we don't know yet what that is but we know there should be a solution or there is a solution if however one of the two conditions isn't given so either f is not continuous or g is not compact or both then actually we don't know a solution could still exist but it may also not exist So, before solving the Lagrangian problem, we will always have to write down the Lagrangian conditions. And that is that the first partial derivative of L with respect to x1, so L1, uh, is equal to zero at any maximum or solution to the problem uh, as indicated by the asterisk that the second partial derivative of the Lagrangian function L2 equally evaluated at the solution is zero, that the constraint at the solution is large or equal to zero, and then the complementary slackness condition that lambda is large or equal to zero and lambda times g again evaluated at the optimum is equal to zero. So I should actually add a, a lambda asterisk here as well. So these are the Lagrangian conditions, and these are necessary conditions which any optimum has to meet. Now it turns out that these, under some conditions, these conditions are actually also sufficient. That means if a point meets these conditions, then it is the solution uh, to the problem. And these conditions are sufficient if the uh, function which we want to maximize, so f of x1 and x2, and the constraint g of x1 and x2 are globally concave. So that is important. That will, or these two conditions, if they are both met, they will turn the Lagrangian uh, conditions as listed on the left hand side of the screen into actually sufficient, necessary and sufficient conditions. So our first step to solving such a problem would always be to find solutions. Well, actually we have to be careful as we find solutions, we're actually not finding solutions, we're in the first instance finding potential solutions. And then once we have them, we will have to evaluate uh, whether they will actually be the solutions to the problem. We get to this. So how do we find potential solutions? First, by solving the unconstrained problem, and that is uh, equivalent to setting lambda equal to zero. And we're familiar with how we find uh, potential solutions here. We find stationarity points, and then we check whether any stationarity point we find, and we could of course find several ones, whether that stationarity point or these are minimum, maxima or saddle points. 
And you know, you will have to look at the Hessian of the uh, function f to decide this. So we need to look at the second uh, derivative. So let's say from this process, we end up with say points a1 and a2 etc could of course be more but it could also be a non so let's leave it generic we end up with these points as potential solutions but before we really um, say that these are potential maxima to our optimization problem we will then also have to check whether at these points our constraint is given and perhaps we rule some out say we rule a2 out so once we looked at the case of lambda equal to zero, we turn our attention to the case of uh, lambda being larger than zero. So that would be constraint maxima, which we are trying to identify. And the process of finding these, and in this clip I will not say how to do that, that um, uh, is the detail which in this clip I don't want to cover. Let's say we find potential solutions. Often it's only one from here, but it could potentially be more than one. And let's call these potential maxima b1, b2, etc. So what we found here is potentially a range of solutions to the problem. And what we now need to uh, establish is which one of these remaining potential points, remember only maxima and only those which meet the constraint. So in our little case here, not A2. So we have to establish which of these delivers the largest function value. And this is just manual work. You got to plug the coordinates for each of these points into F and find the largest function. So let's see, there are several potential outcomes here. What if you find actually no solution, neither through lambda equal to zero nor through lambda larger than zero? So if you find no solution, you could immediately argue that there is no solution, but perhaps in practice, what you want to make sure you want to confirm that when you check the existence of the solution that indeed you find that you can't establish that the solution exists. So in other words, we confirm that the existence of a solution cannot be proven. And that is the case when either the function is non-continuous or the and or the constraint is not uh, compact. So or the constraint is not compact. That should be an or, not an off. Yeah. And then indeed you have no solution. If at this stage you could establish that a solution existed, then you got to go back and possibly find a mistake somewhere. What if you found one potential solution from lambda equals to zero and lambda larger than zero? So together one solution. What you then want to think about is whether the uh, Lagrange conditions are actually not only necessary but also sufficient. Because if you could establish that these conditions were also sufficient, that is the case if both F and G are concave, are globally concave, well in that case you would have established that the one potential solution which you found is in fact the solution to the problem. Because you know that that point met the necessary and sufficient conditions. If however you cannot establish that the conditions are sufficient then before you conclude or before you can conclude that this one potential solution is actually the solution to the problem you need to understand the behavior of the function into all allowable directions. We'll see an example of this soon. So it could be that that one potential solution turns out to be not the solution and that in fact there's no solution. What if you have two or more potential solutions? Well, if you have two or more potential solutions, you firstly, you should find that potential solution which maximizes 
the function value. Yeah, so you want to um, minimize or, or reduce the problem to finding that one potential solution that has the highest function value. So here's an example. Um, some uh, this function here, this is uh, Wolfram or Mathematica code. So the function is a linear one, negative 2x1 minus 3x2, and the constraint is this one, 2 square root of x1 times x2 ought to be larger than 1. That's the constraint. So since we are uh, looking at a linear function, you see this typical contour plot of parallel lines and lighter areas are higher function values. Now the constraint, you can see the edge of the constraint here, and now it's important to understand that the allowed values are here in the shaded area and the not allowed areas are here, that little area on the left. As the constraint is defined as a square root, we need that x1 and x2 are larger than zero. So what we're going to find here is that we find a potential candidate to be the solution on the constraint only. And so we need to figure out whether this one potential solution is a um, is the solution to the problem. We're in this middle case and the question is now are the Lagrangian conditions sufficient or only necessary? So if we look at the functions at the function, the function itself here, negative two x one minus three x two is a um, linear function. So that is um, globally concave, as all linear functions are. They're both concave and convex, so it is concave. What about the constraint? It's not so super obvious uh, to see, but you can uh, check the Hessian of that constraint, and you will find that it is negative semi-definite everywhere, and therefore G is indeed globally concave as well. So that means our Lagrangian conditions are not only necessary, they are also sufficient, and hence that one potential solution we found is indeed the solution to our problem. So let's look at a last example. Here again, we uh, we can see the uh, Mathematica commands. And here's the function log x1 minus x1 plus log x2 minus x2. That's the function. And the constraint is this linear constraint. Negative x1 minus negative x2 plus 1 needs to be larger than 0. So it's this little triangle area which uh, uh, which contains the functions which are indeed allowed by the constraint. Everything outside is not allowed. And here again we are calculating log, so x1 and x2 have to be larger than zero. <coughs> so what we find here, remember lighter areas are higher function values, is that an unconstrained optimum, indeed an unconstrained maximum, would be somewhere here. So that's an unconstrained maximum, but it lies in the non-allowed area, so the constraint isn't fulfilled at that point. So we will not find a potential uh, solution with lambda equal to zero, but if we set lambda larger to zero, so we allow it to sit on the constraint, we will find this point here. Uh, so this is our uh, potential <coughs> solution. So we are again in the case uh, where we have, so now we are in some sense in the case where we have two or more potential solutions, but one is not allowed because of the constraint. So in some sense, there's only one potential uh, solution left. The uh, question is whether we are, <coughs> so we're in this case, then whether our Lagrangian conditions are sufficient or not. So both these functions are indeed concave. So again, we have sufficient conditions. 
and that means this one point is the solution to the problem. So here is another example and uh, this is now one which um, is slightly tricky. So we have a quadratic function here. So that's why you can see all the, uh, the contours are all circles. And here's our constraint. It's a linear constraint. So our quadratic function here, it's a um, both the quadratic terms in x1 and x2 enter positively. So this quadratic function is actually convex. And the constraint is a linear constraint. And uh, the linear constraint is um, here indicated by this line. And so remember, we need to figure out which values are allowed or not. So the constraint goes on. We are allowing any sort of values. Values to the right are not allowed by the constraint. Values to the left are allowed. So. The constraint is also not compact. You can perhaps see that. So the existence of a solution is not guaranteed. So we will find a stationarity point here. But if you evaluate the Hessian, you will figure out that this is actually a minimum. And that makes sense knowing that our function is a quadratic function. So we will find setting lambda larger to zero, we will find a constraint maximum. That's here, where the contour curve and the constraint will touch. So this is another potential. So this is a potential solution to the problem. So we are, again, in this case where we have one potential solution to the problem. However, f is convex, so we can't establish that the Lagrangian conditions are sufficient and not only necessary. So we need to figure out what that function looks like everywhere else. And now if you see, if you move to x1, x2 combinations in these directions, you'll see that the function will ever increase. We have a quadratic function. So it means our constraint optimum is no solution to the problem. In fact, there is no solution. 